Welcome back. I hope you've appreciated the film Energy Slaves. So what did you learn from the film? Perhaps that every household needs slaves to produce its energy, but that of course was a joke. It is usually fossil fuels that provide this energy. And we found that this amount of energy is immense. We would need many rowers to keep us going. We also saw that some activities cost more energy than others. And we noticed that a lot of the energy a house uses is often hidden, unknown. For instance, we saw one rower working all night to keep some appliances and building services going. Leaving equipment on, or standby, still demands electricity, around 10% of the total energy use. In order to understand this better, in this lesson we will go deeper into energy and power, which are two different units. Therefore, we have to go back to school to recollect some fundamental knowledge. First, energy. The unit for energy is Joule. Other magnitudes of energy are expressed by kilojoule, megajoule, gigajoule, terajoule, petajoule and exajoule, the largest order of magnitude on planet Earth. When looking at buildings, megajoules and gigajoules are the mo units most used. Other units for energy are calorie or kilocalorie. The latter is what you usually see on the wraps of food. And an energy unit commonly used for electricity is watt hour, kilowatt hour or gigawatt hour. Kilowatt hour is the common unit for electricity use in buildings. Now let's have a look at the unit of power. Power is the energy used or produced over a certain period. So its logical unit is joule per second, for which we use the term watt. And just as with energy, power can be given different magnitudes, kilowatt, megawatt, gigawatt, terawatt, petawatt. For buildings, kilowatt and megawatt are the most common units. A different unit for power is the one it all started with, by Mr. James Watt, the horsepower. One horsepower equals 746 watts. Don't ask me why. A horse usually is stronger than that. Important to remember from this slide is that one kilowatt hour equals 3.6 megajoules, or in reverse, one megajoule equals 0 0.278 kilowatt hours. You will need this later when we do energy conversions. Here you see a table with typical values of for power of human activities. We all use energy, even when asleep. Just sitting behind your screen, you already use a little over 100 watts. As you can see, judo is physically and energetically one of the most powerful sports. Not all power, however, is put into force and motion. Most of the 1150 watts is emitted as heat. The rowers we saw in the Energy Slaves film produced up to 350 watts, but in total it must have been at least twice as much, leading to a warm basement. On the right hand side you see the power of some equipment. Through LED, lighting has become up to 95% more efficient compared to old fashioned bulbs. Mind that even a small car requires enormous power. About 100 horses, that's quite a carriage. Now let's have a look at fossil fuels. If you look well at the energy value of natural gas, petrol, diesel, kerosene or vegetable oil and fat, you might see a common denominator. They are all revolving around 36 megajoules, or 10 kilowatt hours as we know from the conversion factor. LPG, liquefied petrol gas and coal are of a minor energy god. They only contain about 25 megajoules of energy. And wood, not a fossil fuel though, contains 20 megajoules per kilogram. To get an even better feeling for energy, I will now tell you a story of the flame, which I was once taught by Professor Jo Hermans. The power of one flame, either from a candle, from wood or from gas, is always around 100 watts. If a flame burns for one hour, it will have produced 100 watts times one hour, which is 100 watt hours, or 0.1 kilowatt hours, or 0.36 megajoules. That doesn't sound a lot like a lot, right? Well, let's see why in the film showering took so much energy. Therefore, we first need to know the power of a boiler. Old boilers, or geysers, often had 10 times 10 flames heating a pipe of water. This means the power of such a boiler or geyser is 10 times 10 times 100 watts, which is 10,000 watts or 10 kilowatts. We already saw that this requires about 30 rowers at full speed. 
Knowing all the basics, we can simply calculate the amount of energy needed for showering. So, how much does showering cost? It won't apply to most people, but the ones really addicted to showers, who spend an hour under warm water, will use the power of the boiler for one hour, costing 10 kilowatt hours or one liter of diesel. Think of taking a milk carton filled with diesel to the shower. A somewhat more modest shower, spending 20 minutes, uses 3.3 kilowatt hours. You could say a beer bottle from a Belgian Abbey filled with diesel. If you are envi environmentally conscious or a fast showerer, you will need a double si a whiskey size of diesel. Cheers! Now this is all for fun, so let's go to our topic, the building. We have the figures for the Netherlands. How much energy does a Dutch household use? For their home, Dutch households on average need 1400 cubic meters of gas for heating, hot water and cooking. This is 13.7 megawatt hours of thermal energy. And 3500 kilowatt hours of electricity is also needed. But we should actually account for more. Why is that? Electricity is generated in power plants, which usually burn fossil fuels for heat that drives a generator that produces electricity. Not all energy content of the fuel is converted into electricity. Most is actually waste heat. So the kilowatt hours of electricity you receive has cost more kilowatt hours of fuel, which we call the primary energy. In the Netherlands, the average efficiency of power plants is about 45%. So the 3.5 megawatt hours has actually cost 7.8 megawatt hours of primary energy. Together, the total amount of primary energy needed for the house is 21.5 megawatt hours, or close to 10 megawatt hours per person. If we want to become energy neutral, all this energy needs to be produced sustainably. Is that a lot? We will see. For now, I will thank you for your intention. See you next time.